Hello everyone, this is Mang Sangvi from vlama.com and I'm back with another PHP how to video and in this video we will learn how to allow an end user to download file from our server. So this is the demo which we are going to create in this video. On this demo page we have two URLs. So let me click on first one and after clicking on this first URL we are able to download this file php download file from server.zip. Let me click on cancel. And now if I'm going to click on second file, again we are able to download the same file. Now what is the difference between these two links? The first one is the direct link to your file and in the second link we have some condition to allow a download. So let's see how to create this page and how to control the download for an user. For this I'm going to refer this blog post, the blog post you are available in the description of this video or you can click on this notification icon. The first thing I want to open my code editor, I am using Visual Studio Code. Code editor is not important. Now I want to create this folder structure. So let me click copy this block. I am going to create this block folder first and then I am going to open this one. I want to create another directory PHP and inside this we are going to create our another folder. Now my directory is ready. Next thing inside this I am going to simply create a new file and I am going to name it index.php. Okay. And in this index.php we are going to copy this code HTML code and then we are going to paste it just here. That's it. Now we need to create this zip file. So let me quickly open this location. So I am going to say right click reveal in explorer and inside this we are going to save this zip file so let me quickly click on download file and then i'm going to save it just here okay so our first html is ready our first sample download file is ready let's test this page so i'm going to type my demo dot vlm on dev okay and let me quickly open this entire path okay so right now this url if i'm going to open visual studio code and if i'm going to edit this in this url we are directly pointing we are directly pointing to the zip file okay and if anyone is going to click on this url anyone is able to download this file so let me quickly click on this download file yes we are able to download it now i want to restrict it i want to allow only logged in user are able to download this file for this we are going to modify our code and this is the second code html code and then i am to paste it just here okay so this is the first part we are directly linking to our zip file and this time in second link we are calling a download file.php with an id okay so let me quickly create this php file i'm going to select this and then i'm going to click on this to create a new file and inside download dot download file.php we are going to write our logic okay the logic for this is available on my blog post so let me quickly copy this entire file entire code and then i'm going to paste it here now what is available inside our download file.php okay so let me open index.php and in this index.php we are calling download file.php with an id okay so this may be a file id this may be a token to download the file okay so on download file.php we are first storing our id inside file id variable okay if file id is greater than 1 then we have a message variable with default value invalid file id okay if we are providing an id and if its value is greater than 0 then only we are going to execute this f block else we don't need to perform anything we need to simply display the message okay so let's assume we get the correct id so this is the case let's say we get the correct id if the file id is correct 
okay file id is matching with 123 here we hard coded the 123 you can add anything any logic you can fetch the id from the database and you can check if the id is available in the database if id is available in the database then you can enter in this if block if you are if the given id is not matching you can display a appropriate message for example we get the correct id then we are going to enter in this block okay and now we have another condition if user is logged in by default its value is false if user is logged in then only allow a download if user is not logged in then display a message okay so this is how you can add multiple condition before allowing a download so let me quickly save this file and let's test the second url i'm going to click on this i'm going to refresh this one and this is the second url if i'm going to click on this download file php file download example please log in to download the file okay so this is the scenario where we are providing the correct id so let me quickly change the id with something else invalid file id and let's assume we did not provide any id again invalid file id so you required a valid file id you required a valid logged in session to download this file now let me quickly change some values i want to change is user login boolean value from false to true so i'm going to change it to true and then again i'm going to click on this second url and now we are able to download the file okay in case of everything is perfect we are not displaying any message so this is very important thing if you are going to display any message then you are not able to provide the download okay so that's why if everything is fine we are truncating the message inside message variable we have nothing and in the end we are just displaying message only if its value is greater than zero if everything is fine then we are downloading the file and after this if this block is going to execute it is going to find message is equal to zero it is not going to echo anything okay so this is one important thing if you are allowing to download then you must then don't use the echo now this is the block this is block is for allowing the download now what is in this block in this block first we are we created a header contents description file transfer content type is application octet stream attachment and then file name we are getting the file name using the we are getting the file name from this file variable and then finally we have expires so we have all these headers to allow the download file and finally we are using the read file so read file is going to read the entire content for this file and it is going to write this content inside this header output okay so this is how you can allow condition based download so you are able to understand and i hope now you are able to create your own condition before allowing a download i hope you enjoy this video if you like this video don't forget to click on like subscribe share it with everyone provide your feedback and see you all in next video some important URLs.